Are you calling uh, Mary Paul as your first witness today? Yes, please. All right. Ms. Paul, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Um, I will first have to. Okay. Have you raised your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm under penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give in this matter is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. Please state your name, spelling your last name for the record. My name is Mary Paul, P-A-U-L. And for whom are you employed? Milwaukee County. And what is your position? Human Resources Business Partner. And how long have you held that position? Since November of 2020. All right, uh, thank you. Go mm -hmm. ahead, Attorney Hitchcock Cross. Okay, what, what position did you say you held? Human Resources Business Partner. Business Partner, okay. Good morning. And what was your uh, position before that? Human Resources Management Assistant. Management Assistant, okay. And what are your uh, job duties <clears throat> as a, a management assistant? As the management assistant, um, I am. I was responsible for mainly administrative duties related to the HR function, supporting primarily the sheriff's office. So that would involve hiring um, and working with new hire forms, entering data into the system to process a variety of changes for employee statuses. Okay, so although at that time you didn't work, for, or did you work for the sheriff's office at that time? I'm employed by Human Resources, and the sheriff's office was one of my client groups that I support. Okay, okay. And so I know <clears throat> HR in the county has uh, very specific um, vocabulary. So if there's any time I'm not using the word um, that you're used to, if you'll let me know, I'd appreciate that. Okay. Appreciate okay. It. Okay. So then let's talk about the, the position that you have now. What are your job duties in that position? As a human resources business partner, I'm primarily responsible for um, working with my client groups on a variety of strategies and processes related to hiring and retention, um, learning and development, uh, performance management and corrective action perhaps, um, supporting them with employee relations related functions. Okay, and where does the sheriff's uh, department fit in into that? Um, my current assignment as a human resources business partner, one of my client groups is the sheriff's office. Okay, and about how, what size of, or what percentage of your um, clients is the sheriff's department? Um, I only have one other client group, but I would say at least 80 to 85 percent okay given so, the size of the sheriff's office so are you the only one who works on the sheriff's office is that fair no it's my primary um okay. like function i guess you could say but i have other hr um, people on my team that help support as needed uh, depending on the requests we get or the workload we do share some workload well, then let me ask it this way. Are there other business manager partners that service the sheriff's department? Yes, there is one um, that is a backup for me in the event I'm unavailable or out of the office, but I am the primary point of contact for the sheriff's office. Okay, I appreciate all that. So uh, based on that um, work experience, do you have knowledge of uh, the employee complaint process at the sheriff's department? Yes, I do. Okay. And um, as I understand it, there are several different avenues for uh, employees to make complaints. Is, isn't that true? When you say avenues, what do you mean? That's fair. Ways to submit different right. processes. Can, yeah. So let's just start with that. And I appreciate you asking for that clarification. What I'm talking about here is if I wanted to make a complaint as a yes. sheriff's uh, employee, I would have uh, more than one person that I could go to, correct? Yes. Okay. And, and, and to be fair, when I say more than one person, I mean more than one office or um, work unit or something like a supervisor. Is that fair to say? Yes. Okay. Do you know all of those ways that I can make a complaint as an employee? So you have maybe different avenues to start with as far as who you submit that to. However, 
almost all complaints go through the professional standards division for the sheriff's office. Okay, great. Um, so we, so ultimately they're going to go to the professional standards division. Does that sound right? In most cases, yes. Okay. Um, can you? What would be the situations where they don't go to the professional services division? So most, like I said, are sent to the professional standards division for review. In limited circumstances, some cases may involve human resources input, but human resources and professional standards would work to determine what that appropriate course of action is. Um, those limited cases that I was speaking to would still be handled collaboratively between human resources and professional standards, as professional standards is the main route for employee complaints in the sheriff's office. Okay, so when we're talking about uh, professional services, who are you speaking of? Are you talking about Molly Zillig? Are you talking about uh, Mr. Novotny or somebody else? Uh, for the professional standards division that is handled by Captain Novotny, my understanding is Molly Zillig is above that division and he will include her as appropriate. Okay, so when you're, uh, and when we're talking about HR in that relationship, we're talking about you, correct? Yes. Okay, so it's fair to say that there is, uh, when we're talking about HR and professional standards make the decision, it's fair to say that that's you and Mr. Novotny, correct? In most cases, yes. However, I may have input from my manager and my manager's director as well, if needed. Okay, and who's your manager? Arvis Williams. Okay. And what's her title? HR manager. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> now, that fact that you just mentioned that most complaints that start with HR end up at professional standards division, uh, is that known to sheriff's employees, generally speaking? Objection calls for speculation. I, I would agree with that, so that is sustained. Okay, well you are uh, in charge of, do you know how HR policies are um, disseminated? Are you speaking of human resources policies yeah. or sheriff's office policies? I understand that there's both. So let's just focus on HR policies, please. So human resources policies, those are communicated to employees upon hire during their new employee orientation. Okay. So, and how does the, does the county make sure that um, employees read these policies uh, during their, that orientation? It is the responsibility of the employee to read them in their entirety, but an overview is provided during their orientation. Okay. And at that time, um, and did you have knowledge of this orientation process? At what time? Uh, uh, I didn't know if you were referring to a specific time period or... No, you, it's, that's the best okay. response that anybody's given me in the last two days. I will, um, I'll try to clarify that and I appreciate you focusing in on that. So uh, let's say during 2020. Yes, um, since I have been employed with the county since 2017, that has been the understanding through new employee orientation. There's an overview of human resources policies. And, and you went through that orientation yourself, correct? Yes. Okay, and then are you also, uh, do you have any part in um, the, um, Orientating employees? Yes, sometimes. Okay. So it's fair to say you're familiar with that process? Yes. Okay. And it's so based on that familiarity with the process, are you able to tell us what um, the what the county communicates to sheriff's deputies about what their avenues for making HR complaints are? The new employee orientation that's provided to employees is an overview for all county employees. It is not specific to specific position titles, um, so it would be an overview. So anything specific to a different department or a position within a department would be, you know, through the department's work rules or policies. Sure, but sheriff's uh, deputies are 
county employees, correct? Yes. And they go through that orientation process or something else? They go through that orientation process as part of their onboarding. Great. So let's just focus right there then, okay? So during that onboarding, what is communicated based on your knowledge and experience to sheriff's deputies uh, when they uh, about their avenues for making how they're supposed to make HR complaints? Start with that. That is not in the general county orientation that would be handled through the sheriff's office and their orientation that they provide to employees through their training period. I'm not involved with that. Okay, but you're aware of that? Aware that it exists, yes. Okay. And uh, so the, the at no time during the orientation process are county employees told about how to make uh, c complaints about race discrimination to HR, is that true? I would object that that misstates her prior testimony. For the record, uh, please. Okay, I'll allow her to answer if she can. I believe there is a statement about general employee complaints in the handbook. However, there may also be other policies that departments may have in conjunction with the general employee handbook. Okay, are you aware of any of those policies? Sheriff's office policies? For example. Very general knowledge. Okay, what is that very general knowledge? My understanding is that the majority of complaints go through professional standards division for review. Okay, but that's just uh, the outcome. My question is on the procedure and the knowledge of the procedure by uh, employees that they're given uh, when they're hired. Okay, so- I would need to- Is it fair to say, or is it not fair to say, that employees have the ability uh, are told that they can go to HR to make race discrimination complaints when they're hired. Yes, I think that's fair to say. Okay, great. But it's also fair to say that based on your knowledge and experience that the vast majority of uh, complaints uh, within, and these are race and discrimination complaints that are within the uh, Sheriff's Department are handled by Professional Services Division. Is that true? In most cases, professional standards reviews, complaints, and HR may work collaboratively with them on limited cases. Great. Uh, are sheriff's department employees told of that fact at any time? I would need to review the specific sheriff's office policy. Okay, but you're, the, my question to you is at orientation, I guess, are sheriff's department employees told to your knowledge or not whether or not uh, this professional standards division is going to end up handling the vast majority of HR complaints. I do not know as I'm not part of the sheriff's office orientation onboarding. Okay. Do you, as part of your job, do you take any HR race discrimination complaints? Do you intake those? Yes. Okay. At any time during that process, do you explain to uh, Sheriff's Department employees that uh, the decision about the HR complaint is going to be made in conjunction with Professional Standards Division? Yes. When do you do that? Upon review of um, a complaint, perhaps, I would let the employee know if it is being referred to Professional Standards Division for review. but not while they're filing the complaint, only afterwards? Yes. Is that policy or something else? Which part? The fact that you don't tell them, the complainants, that their complaint is not gonna be handled by HR in the vast majority of circumstances, but going to be handled by professional services division. Uh, do you tell them before or after uh, the complaint is uh, filed? I'm gonna to object to the compound question, but just for the record. Okay, so noted. In almost all cases, an employee sends me a complaint directly and does not reach out prior to ask how they would go about filing a complaint. Okay. So it's fair to say that you don't tell them prior to the fact that they make this complaint uh, that in fact, uh, you and Mr. Novotny are gonna be making the decision about it, correct? In most cases, yes. Okay. And you're aware that Mr. Novotny is watching your testimony now? Is that right? 
Yes. Okay. Does that affect your testimony here today? No. Okay. Are you aware of whether or not the county has any anti-retaliation policies? Yes. What is your awareness of those policies? My awareness is that Milwaukee County does not um, allow retaliation for filing complaints. Okay. I'm aware that there is an employee relations hotline um, where employees can anonymously file complaints or concerns that they have. So I'm sorry, can you refresh me? When did you start your position as a business manager partner? Officially November, 2020. Okay. So about two years, is that fair to say? Yes. Okay. So during that period of time, how many uh, retaliation complaints have you taken in from the sheriff's department? I do not know. Okay. Do you recall any here today? I would need to check my records um, for that information. So you're unable to state a single retaliation complaint here today in the last two years of employment? Correct. Okay. How about a discrimination complaint? Do you know how many discrimination complaints you've taken in in the last two years? No. Okay. Can you state a single discrimination complaint that you've taken in in the last two years? Again, I would need to check my records for that information. Well, do you think the number is more than five? I do not know. Okay. Could it be zero? It could. In fact, it's zero, isn't it? Sir, I said I would need to check my records if you want that information, as there's a variety of different matters that I deal with on a daily basis. I would need to check those if, you know, if counsel requested. All right. Do you know James Lucky in any way? Yes. Okay. How do you know? In what capacity really do you know? Let's be clear. Do you know him through your employment at the sheriff's, uh, the county? Yes. Okay. How did you come to know Mr. Uh, Lucky? I am aware that he was employed as a deputy sheriff with Milwaukee County. Um, I'm not aware of prior interactions I have had with him. My primary interaction was, uh, I believe, when he had reached out to file a complaint. Okay. And I, have, I just need to make sure that I understood you correctly. You said you weren't aware of prior interactions that you had with Mr. Lucky? My primary um, contact with him was through the complaint that he filed. I'm not aware of prior conversations I may have had with him regarding any issues he may have had that were HR related. Okay. But so then he could have reached out to you before he filed the complaint, but you don't recall. Is that what that means or something else? In relation to the complaint? Relation to anything whatsoever. I'm not aware of prior interactions I've had with Deputy Lucky, other than the complaint that he filed with me. That makes more sense. Thank you. Okay. So uh, let's talk about when you became what you are aware of. So you mentioned a complaint, right? Yes. Okay. What's that complaint about? As I recall, he filed a complaint around August of 2021. Okay. And that was the complaint that I received from him. Great. So far, we've got the date and you received it. Do you remember what it was about? I recall it was about concerns with the sheriff's office in regards to uh, discrimination or retaliation. Okay. When you said or retaliation, did you mean and retaliation? And or. Okay. So what was the nature of his discrimination complaint? 
Uh, objection for the record asked and answered. Please continue. So noted. Go ahead, Ms. Paul. Generally speaking, I recall that it was related to discriminant retaliation from members of the sheriff's office. I would need to review for more specific details on time frames and names. Okay. Did he allege that he was being bullied anytime? I believe so, yes. Did he believe did he allege he was being harassed at any time? I believe so, yes. Okay. Do you know the name Sarah Byers? Yes. How do you know Sarah Byers? She is a deputy sergeant employed with the sheriff's office. Okay. Have you ever received any complaints about uh, Sergeant Byers? I would need to check my records for that information. Uh, does that say you don't know or something else? That means I would need to check my records to ensure that I am counting all the complaints I may or may not have received against Sergeant Byers. Okay. Well, it's not may or may not. Have you received complaints about Sergeant Byers? If I recall correctly, that was someone that Deputy Lucky mentioned in his complaint. However, I cannot recall for certain. Okay, well, that's all we're asking you to do, ma'am. Will that work for you? It's, as long as you just recall as best you can, that's what that's all that we're asking for. So, um, okay, so do you know the name uh, Frederick Gladney? Yes. How do you know Frederick Gladney? Frederick Gladney was a deputy sergeant with the Milwaukee County Sheriff's Office. Okay. Have you ever received any complaints about Frederick Gladney at any time? I believe he was also mentioned in Deputy Lucky's complaint. Okay. Do you know what De Deputy Lucky complained uh, that Frederick Gladney had uh, done? I recall that there was some complaint um, related to him and also his capacity as the union representative. Okay. And um, did Mr. Lucky allege that Mr. Gladney threatened to assault uh, him? Yes. Okay. Can I object to the relevance of this for the record, please? Okay. You can object for the record, yes. Thank you. Okay. And you, you recall that when I asked you about Mr. Lucky's complaints before, right? We recalled what? You recall that Mr. Gladney had threatened to assault, uh, that Mr. Lucky had alleged that Mr. Gladney had threatened to assault him, correct? Yes. Okay. Now, did Mr. Lucky uh, allege that uh, Ms. Byers had threatened to assault him or had assaulted him? I believe I recall that Sergeant Byers was mentioned in his complaint. I do not recall what capacity that was in. Okay. Is there anybody else now that you remember was mentioned in Mr. Lucky's complaint? No. Okay. So besides uh, being threatened uh, with assault by Mr. Gladney and what you don't recall about Ms. Byers, uh, what else do you recall about uh, Mr. Lucky's complaint? The primary item I recall was regarding Sergeant Gladney and the more general description of uh, harassment, potential discrimination. Okay. Now, based on that complaint that Mr. Lucky made, were you able to identify any potential violations of the county's HR policies? When I receive employee complaints, those I then take, especially for the sheriff's office, I'm saying, go, uh, I will reach out to professional standards to review for an appropriate course of action. Your Honor, before we continue, can I have a standing objection to all questions involving the matter with Fred Gra Frederick Gladney since it's already been ruled irrelevant to this matter? Yes. Thank you. I just speed things along so I don't have to keep objecting. Okay. okay. Has Fred Thank Gladney you. been ruled irrelevant to this matter? Okay. 
Okay. So, um, I'm sorry, I've forgotten your last name because it's Miss Paul. Thank you. I'm sorry. So, um, what is your role on receiving? No, nah, I'm gonna scratch that. Do you have any duties when you receive uh, complaints of discrimination or harassment? Yes. What are those duties? I will review the employee complaint and read that through. Upon review, I will reach out to the professional standards division to determine the course of action and involve my manager as appropriate. Okay, how do you know when to involve your manager? I will involve my manager if in most cases with complaints referring to professional standards, whether that's a discussion with her or copying her on an email, sending it to professional standards, perhaps. Okay. And at any time during that process, do you uh, identify or otherwise review the complaint uh, for whether or not there is an actual violation of policy? Generally speaking, yes, I will upon first glance, look at that. However, in many cases, there are people that need would need to be interviewed um, or further conversation with the employee that filed the complaint to ensure accuracy, um, as well as get accounts of what may or may not have happened. Great. And so I'm sure you'll agree with me that investigation is appropriate for uh, determination. But we're just trying to find out in terms of identification, right? You're trained in the HR um, discrimination and retaliation policies, correct? Correct. Okay. Have you received any specific training in those uh, policies? I am aware of those policies and there is general county training, not specific to human resources regarding workplace harassment. Okay. Well, but as your role as an HR uh, receiver of complaints, have you received any specific training on how to receive complaints? I have specific training more pertaining to investigations of complaints. Oh, okay. What is your specific training pertaining to investigation of complaints? My specific training does not apply to most sheriff's office complaints as those primarily go through the professional standards division. I have my investigations that I may use for other employees in other client groups I support. There's a process that I would go through in terms of interviewing the complainant, interviewing appropriate witnesses, and then writing a summary of the findings of fact. Okay, now I got it. So how do you know in your training uh, that you, when you are supposed to go to the take a complaint to the professional standards division. As I stated earlier, almost all complaints go through the professional standards division as that is the um, route that sheriff's office complaints go through. If I had questions whether or not they should go through that process, I would involve my manager. Great. But so my question is, is that at some point you didn't have knowledge that you were to take all complaints to the sheriff department's office, correct? At some point, I did not have knowledge. Right, like if, when you were in high school or other times like that, for example, when you weren't employed by the county, you didn't know that, correct? I'm gonna object to the relevance and the form of a question. Yeah, where are we going with this? We're Attorney trying to find out when, how she learned about this policy. Okay, well, why don't we just ask her that question? I, I thought we had, but let's try it again. How did you learn about this policy to get uh, to take HR complaints directly to professional standards division without review? I would say I didn't say without review. I do review those any complaints that I do receive. If you're asking how I'm aware that I should be involving professional standards division that was communicated to me through my training and my manager. Okay. Is that written down anywhere? No. No. Okay. So that's a, it's fair to say that's an unwritten policy, correct? Correct. Okay. 
And is that unwritten policy disseminated to sheriff's uh, department employees at any time, generally speaking? No, but again, I would want to review the specific sheriff's office policy for the language that's in there. Okay. So it's fair to say that your manager told you that the practice was to go to the uh, professional standards division with any complaints, right? We have had conversations with professional standards division to ensure that we are on the same page with how those complaints are handled. So it was a collaborative decision. Why would you as HR or uh, want to be on the same page as the professional standards division? <laughs> to ensure consistency and accuracy with how employee complaints are handled. Okay, but it's also fair to say you wouldn't want to have one outcome from HR that's different from another outcome from professional standards, correct? Correct. Okay. So um, again, and this is something that I'm not very clear on because it does seem like you're saying you get some of the complaints that you get don't go to professional standards division, right? Not all of them, but some of them, correct? What I mean by that is not all complaints will go through the professional standards division route. However, in almost all cases, professional standards reviews those with us. If we were to determine a conflict of interest, let's say perhaps it was about someone in professional standards, I would review with my manager. Okay. So it's fair to say that all complaints made to HR about retaliation or discrimination ultimately go to professional standards. Uh, sorry, professional standards is ultimately notified about all of those complaints, correct? In Objection, Ms. Bates. Thank you. I think she clarified. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't hear the answer. I said in most cases. Okay, What? what's the distinction? I'm going to object to Aston answered. For the record. Yeah. Okay. If you can answer, Ms. Paul. All complaints are reviewed on a case by case basis. So with each complaint, there can be different things that are included in that complaint that we would want to review. And so it is a case by case basis. Right, but the people who are doing the review, the review is happening on a joint basis between professional standards and your office, correct? The initial review, yes. Okay. And there's some rare cases, apparently, if an accusation is made against a professional standards division person, then, then you might handle that, right? Yes, that was one hypothetical example. Do you have any other exceptions that you can uh, name here today? No. Okay. Have you ever known, have you ever had an example of that happening where a uh, complaint was made against a professional standards division employee? No. I don't believe so. Okay. How do you know that that would be a special exception then? In my training and in my review of where there may be a conflict of interest, I would not, I would know it's not appropriate to send a complaint hypothetically about Captain Novotny to Captain Novotny. Okay. What about Mr. Smoot? Would that be an appropriate thing to send to Mr. You, do you know who Mr. Smoot is? Yes. Okay. How about how about any of the investigators under Mr. Novotny? Would that be an appropriate thing to send to him? I believe so. Yes, and I would likely involve Molly Zillig first, as she is the more senior uh, legal and compliance officer over that area. Do you ever discuss um, HR complaints directly with Ms. Zillig? Yes. Okay. And that's as her role as uh, the supervisor of the professional standards division or something else? Chief legal and compliance officer. And she is the supervisor for Captain Novotny. Okay. So that's what I'm trying to find out is which role are you speaking to her in at that time? I would say they are one and the same. Okay. How did you form that opinion? Her role as Captain Novotny's supervisor is her role as the chief legal and compliance officer of the sheriff's office. It's one of her job responsibilities. Okay. So,
to your knowledge, <coughs> if a discrimination or retaliation complaint is started uh, not at HR but within the sheriff's department, is HR notified about that complaint at any time? I'm only aware of the complaints that they send to us. I am not aware if they send all complaints to us. Oh, okay. So when you say complaints they send to, to you, what does that mean? My knowledge is that they would send any complaints that are HR related for our input if needed. Okay. And um, for those of us who don't know what HR related means, can you explain that? If professional standards were to receive a complaint and it was in regards to sheriff's office work rules only, that would go through the professional standards division route. If they believe that human resources may have separate input into that matter, they may involve us um, for review of those. However, I am aware that professional standards will review human resources policy violations as well. I may be involved to assist with that if needed whether that's in a witness capacity or reviewing. Okay, so it's fair to say that the share of the professional standards division and Mr. Novotny here, he's the one who decides whether or not they send it to HR or not, correct? That would likely be his decision or the decision of Chief Zillig. Okay, and then um, I still am unable to, I'm still just not certain on what, for what kind of cases are gonna be going to HR. Are you able to answer that? I'm going to object that this has been asked and answered. Well, the answer that we've gotten here, just to be clear, uh, is that the kind of cases that go to HR are the kind of cases that need HR's input. So, I mean, it's that that's it's a little bit circular there, so it's hard for me to understand what the kind of cases would need HR input. So I could ask it that way, too. But, um, you know, is it attendance cases, for example? Is it uh, discrimination cases? What, what are we talking about here? Do you know? Can right. you answer that question, Ms. Paul? Can the question be clarified if, what is he asking? So, okay, I'm really asking was what categories of complaints go to HR from the Sheriff's Department, if you know? I'm gonna object that this has been asked and answered. Well, I'm not sure we that I have heard um, an example of the kinds that would stay with HR. So, or, you're right. Thank you, Judge. So that might be a, a, a way to answer that question is to provide some examples of cases that could go. Are you able to provide some examples of cases that go to HR from the Sheriff's Department, please? I can provide one example where there was an employee that was having a concern about lactation breaks. Okay. That is something that human resources ultimately handled. I did have to question a few individuals within the sheriff's office about, you know, break times and things of that nature, but that would be an example of something that human resources would primarily investigate. Okay. But it is true that HR does investigate, uh, HR complaints from to, from the sheriff's department employees from time to time, correct? Objection. Asked and answered. Can okay. We please? I, I think she she just answered that. Well, we have one this lactation. Okay, so we've got this one lactation one. The problem is we had this uh, statement before that says that if there's any investigation, then it's got to go to professional standards. So that that's my confusion there. Are you able? Oh, to she said that most go, most go. Okay, most. What about FMLA complaints? How are those handled? Objection relevance. I would agree that that does not seem relevant with respect to Mr. Lucky. Okay. Have you ever investigated any discrimination complaints? Objection asked and answered. Sustained. Okay. Are you able to cite any other cases other than the lactation case that you remember in which you investigated any facts? Objection. Relevance. We're here to discuss Mr. Lucky's case. I would agree with that. 
So sustained. On relevance? Yeah, uh, yes, I think I would like to focus more on Mr. Lucky's case and less on on exceptions. Well, okay. I mean we I thought we were already clear that relevance was not an appropriate objection, an appropriate means to stop. Well, I can when I, I when it's starting to extend the the hearing longer than than okay. it needs to be. I understand, Judge. Thank you for that input. Okay, just one second, please. So, Mr. She, so, so when she stated that mm. it's determined by civil rules, so nobody, I never got a uh, uh, decision or outcome about this case, so that means no uh, uh, civil service rules wasn't violated, so shouldn't this have went to her then? Okay. All right. So, uh, of the complaints, uh, Mr. Lucky made just one complaint to you, is that right? As I recall, yes. Okay. And um, as I recall, you said in that complaint, he made uh, allegations of retaliation. Is that right? Yes. Okay. What was the nature of his retaliation concerns at that time? As I stated, I recall that his general complaint was regarding Sergeant Gladney as well as Sheriff's Office and fear of retaliation. I do not recall the more specific matters of the complaint, but generally speaking, it was in regards to discrimination and harassment from Sheriff's Office supervisors. Okay. That's what I wasn't sure about. So Sheriff's Office supervisors are the people who are doing the discrimination. Is that uh, fair to say about his allegation? Yes, that is what he alleged. Okay, and that would have been Byers and Gladney, for example, or somebody else? Those are the two names I recall seeing in the complaint. Okay, and then uh, are those the two people that he's alleging retaliated against him, or is there more on the retaliation? I don't recall which specific items, retaliation, harassment, et cetera, referred to each supervisor, but overall, his complaint was in regards to the retaliation and harassment. Okay. And uh, the po county has policies that protect people who make complaints. Isn't that true? Yes. Okay. I what believe I, so. What? You believe so? Yes. Okay. And in fact, as an HR business partner, it's your responsibility uh, to take positive steps to make sure that people aren't retaliated against for filing a complaint. Isn't that true? Yes. Okay. So let's talk about Mr. Lucky's uh, complaint in which he says that he's afraid of retaliation. What positive steps did you take to make sure that Mr. Lucky wouldn't be retaliated against? Objection assumes facts, not in evidence. This, she's coaching this witness. Okay. Well, um, did you take any steps, Ms. Paul? As I recall from my notes on that complaint, I believe there were concerns about safety. I do recall having conversations with Deputy Lucky as he was concerned for his safety if he was comfortable reporting to work. I do recall taking proactive steps to ensure he was able to do so. Great, what were those steps? Objection asked and answered. Well, I think she just testified that she called him and spoke with him. Those are the only steps that... that you took to ensure that Mr. Lucky's safety was uh, ensured? I recall having phone conversations with him. I believe he was referred for FMLA information if he needed that, um, as well as our employee assistance program, or otherwise known as the EAP. Great. So now can you explain to us how FMLA uh, complaints are handled um, by the, uh, your office? I'm going to object to relevance. She didn't say that he was going to object to relevance. Okay. Well, she said she referred him to possibly filing for FMLA. Why did you do that? Let's start with that. 
In the complaint that I received, he, I believe, had mentioned some mental health concerns, um, stress, fear of safety. So when I see things like that, it would be appropriate to refer the employee to FMLA if they believe they have a qualifying condition and require leave. Okay. And, and one of the reasons that you know that Mr. Lucky had a, uh, was afraid for his safety was because uh, Mr. Gladney was threatening to pop him in the mouth, right? Objection assumes facts, not in evidence. Right. She, no, she said she, that she recalled that it was a threat of assault on Mr. Gladney. She sure did. Right, but she did not necessarily that it was a, to pop him in the mouth. Do you recall those words being used, ma'am? No. Okay. But you do recall that it was a threat of an assault. Is that right? I recall it being a threat. Okay. So let's be clear on that. <clears throat> what steps did you take to, and, and let's be clear. You understand because the, your primary client is the sheriff's department that sheriff's deputies uh, have a dangerous job. Isn't that true? Yes, some of their job duties do put them in dangerous situations, yes. Right, and they're frequently exposed to uh, danger that requires them to have adequate backup and assistance, isn't that true? Yes. That's it. Okay, and if somebody's supervisor was threatening yeah. to assault them, uh, that not only would they be in fear of that danger, but they could also be exposed to other danger as well, including um, physical harm due to their interactions with um, uh, law enforcement interactions, isn't that true? Objection, compound, not relevant, assumes facts and evidence and misstates prior testimony. It was rather a long question, uh, Attorney Hitchcock Cross. Could you summarize it more succinctly for the yes. witness, please? Did you not understand my last question? Can you please repeat your question? Okay. Can you, did you not understand it? Yes or no, please. I need you to repeat the question so I know if I understand it. Okay. So we'll break it down then. You understand that uh, sheriff deputies have law enforcement duties, correct? Yes. And you understand that those law enforcement duties uh, potentially put them into harm's way, correct? Yes. And you also understand that they require adequate backup and support uh, in order to do their job to enforce the laws. Isn't that true? I'm going to object that that's vague and beyond the scope of knowledge of this witness. Well, she can she answer say, if I mean, she if knows. If you wouldn't have these speaking objections, she might just be able to say whether she knows or not, doesn't know. And that, that would be, then we'd have this witness's testimony as opposed to Ms. Lawrence's testimony. Well, I will note the objection for the record. And Ms. Paul, if you don't understand anything, I'm certain you you know to, to say that you don't understand. Um, but if you can answer the question, then please do so. Yes, in cases they may need backup and assistance. Okay. And uh, you also understand that uh, the failure of them to get backup or assistance could be life-threatening, correct? Yes. Okay. So, given all that understanding that you have, what steps did you take to ensure that Mr. Lucky's safety would be protected uh, while he was a law enforcement officer and had made these complaints? I had previously discussed the fear of safety and some of his mental health mm -hmm. concerns and how I referred him to FMLA and EAP. I believe I also had a conversation with him that retaliation is not tolerated. Um, that is standard when an employee, if I speak to them regarding a complaint that we do not allow retaliation and if they, you know, have concerns about that, they can reach out. However, that does still not stop the process of professional standards division being the primary body that handles employee complaints for the sheriff's office. To your knowledge, is FMLA paid or unpaid? It would depend on where they are at in their FMLA entitlement. Okay, so your solution to Mr. Lucky's uh, fear for his safety was to have him go on FMLA um, for lack of backup from his supervisors, is that right? 
No, that's not what I said. Okay. So can you clarify for me then? Yes. So with his complaint, he mentioned some mental health concerns. Um, fear of safety. I would not I would not recommend someone take FMLA for that as that's not something that is a health condition that may be covered under FMLA. Okay. And in fact, in his complaint, Mr. Lucky not only told you that he was uh, had been threatened to be assaulted, but he was in fear for his safety because of his uh, law enforcement duties, correct? Yes. Okay. And in I fact, he told so. you he was fe in fear for his safety because of his law enforcement duties and his fear of retaliation, correct? Objection asked and answered. I'll allow it. I believe so. Yes, I do recall having conversation asking him if he was safe, if, if he was comfortable. Let me clarify if he was comfortable reporting to work and he said yes. Okay. So that meant to you that he no longer had a fear for his safety or something else. Again, I had a conversation with him regarding his options that he had available that we were taking the complaint seriously and would be looking into the matter. Okay, and you took the complaint seriously by referring it to professional services division or something else? By handling it the way I would handle any employee complaints that would be similar to his. Well, in fact, the way you handle all employee complaints, correct? Judge, the state's prior testimony. It's noted for the record, please continue. As I stated in most cases. <laughs> Okay. So, and in most uh, complaints that you have, do um, sheriff's employees uh, tell you that they're fear in fear for their safety? As I recall, no. No. Okay. In most complaints that you get, do sheriff's employees tell you that they are in fear of their safety because of retaliation from their superiors? No. No. So it's fair to say that you didn't actually handle this case in a, uh, take this case any more seriously uh, because of the fact that he alleged to you that he was in fear for his safety, correct? Objection misstates her testimony and is arguing with his own witness. Yeah, I, I would um, sustain that. On what grounds? That you're arguing with the witness. Well, she's an adverse party and I'm ent entitled to cross-examine her and that's what I'm doing here on that but um you're you're misstating her testimony so either ask another question okay. or and ask the question in a different way or move on so what if anything differently did you do to uh from your normal course of action to protect mr lucky other than have a conversation with mr lucky to protect his safety Objection, compound, and misstates her prior testimony. I'm sorry, audio is cutting out right now for a moment. Okay, I'm happy okay. to repeat the question. All right. So, Which I just objected to anyway. Yeah. It, try not to pack as much into a question to, um, to the witnesses, if possible. Attorney Hitchcock Cross, so that we get the exact words from the, the, the witness. Do I have permission to leave and join right away just to see if the audio issue fixes? Of course. Just one moment. Thank you. Recorded. Uh, on WebEx, you could save from all my jokes. And in person, I, you'd have to deal with me. I'd be making 20 jokes a minute. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. Keep that in um, mind for future reference. Okay. Well, I don't think the rest of you are going to appreciate what I have to say next, um, because one of my worst fears has just um, come true. I did not uh, hit the recording button when we started this morning. So we have to uh, summarize what has transpired here. First, I'm going to say again, we're on the record with CR 2021-01845, James Lucky versus County Milwaukee. This is a WebEx recording. It is now re actually recording today's proceedings. I'm Administrative Law Judge Anne Marie Molitor. Uh, present for today, we have the complainant, James Lucky, with his attorney, Ben Hitchcock Cross. Um, for the uh, County of Milwaukee, we have their representative, James Novotny, and um, 
representing the county is attorney Melinda Lawrence. Uh, with us on this call is William Davidson, who is a colleague of Ms. Lawrence, and we have Rhonda Rogers, who is a paralegal for the county. We uh, started out by discussing the issue involving yesterday's discussion of the uh, sexual harassment and discrimination uh, policy. Uh, mostly yesterday we were um, concerned with the uh, discrimination policy that was identified as uh, 3.14. Uh, there was some concern that perhaps it wasn't the right um, uh, version of the policy. Um, we were provided with another copy of the policy um, from an earlier time period um, identified as policy 102 um, for the uh, Sheriff's Department. Um, there was some discussion as to what the proper remedy of this uh, would be. I indicated that I was inclined to allow both policies in. Um, we have 3.14 already in the record from yesterday, and um, possibly today we could get someone to corroborate um, the uh, 102 uh, version of the policy. Um, so we uh, said we would address that issue uh, later. Um, then testifying for today is Mary Paul. She is a Milwaukee County employee. She is the human resources business partner. She has been in that position since November of 2020. Before that, she was an HR management assistant. Her job duties um, are primarily, uh, are, were primarily when she was a human resource management assistant, um, administrative related duties uh, with the Sheriff's Department. That's one of her two client groups. Um, her current assignment also includes the Sheriff's Department as a client group. 80 to 85% of her work is done for the Sheriff's Department and she is the primary point of contact for the Sheriff's Department in the Human Resources um, Office. Um, she is aware of the policies for the Sheriff's Department. She um, does take complaints regarding discrimination. She indicated that uh, employees of the Sheriff's Department can go to more than one place, um, but most people go through the Professional Services Division uh, for review. Uh, most of the cases that come through Human Resources directly also go through the Professional Services Division. Uh, it's the main route for complaints from the Sheriff's Department employees. Um, in determining whether a case will go through the Professional Services uh, Division, she does work with Captain Novotny. Um, in terms of how individuals who work for the Sheriff's Department are informed about uh, the policy that um, complaints go through the Professional Services Division. Um, she believes that upon hire during new orientation, the human resources policies are provided. And um, there may be some discussion as to whether or not they also go through uh, professional services division. She wasn't sure because she does not participate in the new employee orientation for the sheriff's department itself. Um, let's see. Uh, she said that Mr. Lucky, or at least during 2020, um, an overview of HR policies were done at time of hire or during orientation and onboarding. Um, she indicated that when she takes complaints, she does explain that it will be advanced to the public service divisions for review or professional services division for review. Um, she testified that Mr. Lucky filed a complaint around August of 2021 regarding his concerns with discrimination and or retaliation from members of the sheriff's office. She recalls that he uh, indicated that he was bullied and being harassed. Uh, two individuals that were recalled with respect to some of that activity were uh, Sarah Byers, a deputy sergeant, and um, uh, Frederick Gladney, a deputy sergeant with the sheriff's office. Um, and this meeting is jokes, being. Uh, Mr. Gladney had um, threatened um, Mr. Lucky. Um, the overall recollection was that uh, the complaint involved harassment and potential discrimination. Um, let's see. And with respect to Mr. Lucky's fear of retaliation, um, she 
uh, talk to him personally. Uh, she recommended um, with respect to some of his fearfulness that he consider um, the EPA, the employee, um, I forget what it's called, um, the EPA um, for his mental health issues and also if he had a qualifying uh, reason to possibly take FMLA. Uh, she asked him he felt, if he felt comfortable reporting for work. He said that he did. And then the lines of questioning were, um, you know, what else did Miss Paul do for Mr. Lucky in response to him saying that he was fearful for his safety? And I think that's about where we left off. Is there anything that you would like to add to that, uh, Attorney um, Hitchcock Cross? Um, not at this time. I mean, I've got some, I think there was some inaccuracies in there and I'll just ask questions based on those. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Um, uh, Attorney Lawrence, is there anything that you would like to add? Um, only that with respect to the sexual harassment policy being um, dated after the complaint and us providing 102 was provided at the request of complainant, the count, county is not offering it as an exhibit. Our remedy, our recommended remedy was that both be excluded. That is correct. I'm sorry. That is absolutely correct. You did um, say that. Um, Thank you. Okay. All right. Then Attorney Hitchcock Cross, I'm sorry, but um, feel uh, please uh, continue your questioning and clarifying any of the issues that I may have misstated I in my summary. That. I'll try to be as flexible as possible.